So, a choker no more. Xander Schauffele is uh, out of the doghouse. Uh, runner-ups and top fives and even just a week before. So that's really great to see. Uh, no Xander Schauffele this week, though, uh, as we have a couple more weeks to go. Just regular PGA Tour events. Uh, and then, of course, we have a huge three-week stretch coming up in the beginning of June where we have signature event, U.S. Open, and signature event. How's it going, Jared? It's going fine. I'm, I'm over it. You know, Bryson was tough to take on Sunday. Um, one, one of the tougher beats I've had. Uh, you know, not, not quite uh, Will Zale Taurus at, uh, at the U.S. Open a couple of years ago, but that was that was tough. It was it was an awesome tournament, though, and I am happy for Xander. Like, he was definitely the best player in the world to not have won a major. You know, I think he deserves it. And I could – I could see him going on a run now. Like now yeah. that he's kind of got the monkey off his back, he closed in a big spot. Like he's obviously he's been the second best player on tour this year behind Scotty. I could see him going on a bit of a run and maybe you know picking off an elevated event or, or something else big uh, later this year. Yeah, he now uh, being second in the world to Scotty, and with uh, Scotty having maybe some distractions. Uh, even though <laughs> uh, I don't know, I haven't heard whether or not they've dropped the charges yet. But they haven't. Uh, they have not. I would think yeah. that they're going to. I mean, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it it is what it is. Uh, it obviously didn't affect him the day the, the day of. And maybe that's not a surprise. All that adrenaline going through, and then you have the night to kind of refocus, and then that's yeah. that's the negative because you now all of the stuff is just you know inundating your 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 brain uh with all of the negative stuff that just transpired 24 hours ago and n not a big surprise that he his his bad day was the day after so also ted scott wasn't there on saturday which i think was a factor um then of course you know sunday ted scott's back Scheffler has one of the best rounds on the course i think on sunday it was it was you know that, that was 64 65 whenever he shot so like i don't know you We'll get into the board this week, and I'm obviously not betting Shuffler at plus two fifty or whatever. But I, I would not be surprised on this course, you know, in in Texas, if he kind of kind of wipes the field and wins by like four or five again. Yeah, either that or he misses the cut for the first time in a long time. Uh, yeah, I, I could definitely see it going either way, like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, at at plus two fifty, whatever he is, it's an impossible pick this week, especially after what happened last week. Um, yep. we, we we felt pretty good going into the day. Because uh, my top pick was Morikawa, so sure. we had Morikawa and Deshambo as our top picks, and uh, it didn't work out. So that's that's the year it's been for us, un un unfortunately. And that's what happens, especially nowadays. Golf is very tough to predict, especially when you talk about the players that did nothing all year and were in contention. Justin Rose, Victor Hovland, yeah. and even Shane Lowry again. I mean, it's like, what are these guys doing here? They haven't done anything. Yeah, Hovland was, was, was one of the bigger stories for me, like looking ahead now. Like, it seems like he's kind of figured it out. There were definitely signs of life from him the previous week. And then you, you look at, obviously, the, the finish at Valhalla, and even you even look at the numbers. Like, the ball striking numbers were kind of back to vintage Hovland, so... Uh, I, I think he's definitely live too. I, I don't know if I love him at um, Pinehurst, but I, I mean, obviously Memorial in a couple of weeks where he's defending champ. I, I would not be surprised if he's able to go back to back there. Okay. So the field, I think we have about 132. Hovland did withdraw. So uh, I'm not sure who picked up the, 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 the position there, but he's out. Okay. Let's take a look at the stats and uh, what you did uh, want a zero win on. Uh, for this week and uh first of all top 10 course history over the last five years not a big surprise that even though jordan spieth missed a cut for the very first time last year he is still the top guy on your list he is yeah and this list in general is filled with a lot of big names which actually isn't always the case i think when we get to these you know lower end non-elevated tournaments a lot of times the course history is kind of littered with you know mid-range to even lower end golfers but you look at this list like jordan spieth tony finau colin morikawa Berger, scheffler max homa makes the top 10 like it's a lot of big names here, which I think speaks to the course. This is not an easy course. I mean, the last two years, the winning score has been in single digits. The other years before that, it's been like the mid-teens. So it is a, it's a 
pretty difficult course, you know, an average scoring to more on the difficult side. It's not a birdie fest. So I think, again, when you get a course like that, um, it makes it tougher for the long shots to win. You're going to kind of see these higher end golfers uh, you know, rise to the top. Okay. And then uh, we take a look at top 10 par fours from four to 450 since the beginning of last year. Yeah. So this, this is a par 70 and it's you know, just over 7,200 yards. So this is very different from what we've seen the last two weeks at Quail Hollow and, and Val Hollow, where it's just been these long driver heavy golf courses. This is more of a shorter positional golf course. So this range of par four is 400 to 450 yards. Um, seven holes fall in that range and two more par fours here are right around 390 yards. So there are nine you know, what we'd consider shorter par fours on this course, which again is very different from what we've seen the past couple of weeks. Um, and so, you know, these are your 10 best players since the start of 2023 on these shorter par fours. You see Scheffler, obviously Morikawa makes a ton of sense. You know, he's good on shorter golf courses. He's not the longest hitter in the world. Um, you see Max Homa show up again here. So I think it's those three guys, right? Scheffler, Morikawa, and Homa who are showing up on uh, both of these lists that we've looked at. And it, what it does is it, it it brings everybody back in. So yeah, uh, yep. and and that's uh, <clears throat> what will make it interesting. And by the way, even though <clears throat> look, this isn't like a signature event. So I, I thought it was interesting because when you take a look at some of the trends that we'll now go over, uh, you'll notice uh, some interesting things, including the ranks of the players, which tells you something. Because the last five winners have averaged fifty sixth in the world including 52nd, 106th. Now, Grio was 80th last year. So that's the last five years. It's ranged from 10th to 106th. So there are going to be... So again, this opens it up, that there will... This is a shot, especially a week after a major, that you can have some lower-ranked players uh, that uh, come into play here. So I think that's also going to be interesting. Um, speaking of trends, we'll go over some of the other top ones. No player has won on his first appearance here since Sergio Garcia did it in 2001. When Garcia did it, he also became the first player since he banker Fitch in 1989 to earn his maiden PGA Tour win. So not only is it rare to win here on your first appearance at Colonial, it's also rare to make it your maiden PGA win. Matter of fact, no first-time winner has ever won here in less than his third appearance since Garcia's win in 2001. That's 19 years, I believe, 19, 20 years. So if you think about it, and first-time winners, so if you think about it, um, that's also telling you that it's not just about winning on your first time. It's about you need some experience. Matter of fact, the average number of appearances by first-time winners since 2001 is six. Grio actually won on his seventh appearance last year. So... Um, there, there were some interesting things there. Again, hard for maidens, hard if you don't play here a lot, um, and, and, and those are things to keep an eye on uh, as well as uh, just overall um, getting some experience on the golf course. Yeah, definitely a course that can be tricky. Again, it's one of those courses not quite like Harbor Town, but a positional course where you got to you know even like be on the right side of the fairway to have the right angle to the green, stuff like that. So it makes sense that experience would help here. The other interesting thing, I, I looked at the um, odds of winners over the last 10 years. We had Spieth win at 7-1 to one in 2016. Other than that, though, there's no like clear favorite that won. Like we had Justin Rose win at 20-1. to one. Sam Burns won at 25-1. to one. Other than that, it's a bunch of guys. Grio was 60-1. to one. Kokrak, 60-1. to one. Berger, 70-1. to one. Nah, 70-1. to one. No super long shots have won. 70 to one's the longest odds. But again, not many like favorites have won either. So, I, and, and I, I kind of went with that in my picks this week. A lot of those like mid range guys between like, you know, 30 and 60, 70 to one. I think that's kind of the spot of the odds board I attacked this week. And part of that was because, you know, recent history at this event, it's been those types of players that have been winning. Yeah, and by the way, you said 70, uh, that range of 70. I think this is important to know too, then odds wise. I don't think there was a Scotty Scheffler at two to one, so therefore, I think that seventy can go to a hundred, because That's that makes totally it. Fair. Yep. So so this week the guys that are like a hundred, hundred and thirty, they would be seventy if it wasn't for Scotty Scheffler. So totally agree. Yep. Um, okay, and then uh, just a couple more trends, and uh, we've got out of the last eleven winners who played on this course the year before winning, all eleven made the cut previous time that they played on the golf course 
So not only do you want some experience here, but at least the year before you want to, all right, I have something. I played four rounds. Eight scored top 15s. So eight of the last 11 winners the year before scored a top 15. Four of those scored a top five. Gria was 63rd the year before, so it doesn't have to be a top 15. Okay. So now uh, let's take a look at our picks. You mentioned your picks, Jared. There they are. And you have two picks that uh, I already like, and you already know the one of them because I made the move on my fantasy team this week, uh, picking up uh, Mr. Hogue. So um, Hogue's your top pick, and uh, mm -hmm. here's my picks. Uh, my top pick being Max Homa. So I have six picks. Jared has six picks. So makes it pretty easy. Now let's go ahead and uh, pop up uh, the odds uh, as we go through this as well. And there they are. Scotty Scheffler plus 260. And yeah, look, um, let's go through this now. And what I think is because, look, Scheffler, just so everybody knows, first two times he played here, not good. Last two years, third and second. Very good. Typical Scotty Scheffler, but he's never won here. It is Texas. That's probably why he's playing. If it wasn't Texas, I don't think he'd be playing this week. So uh, that definitely has a lot to, 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 to you know, to, that comes into it. Morikawa, I came this close to taking Morikawa. I definitely think Morikawa, as you said, could be my one and done this week. I still have him in one and done. You don't. But I think it's one of those things where if I'm going to take him, this would be a perfect week. We know how well he's playing. Uh, last four events, all top 20s, a couple top fives. Um, and... Um, and, and, and let's just start with those two, but especially Morikawa. Like you said, I just think, especially, and you, you showed the stats, uh, this yeah. is just a tailor-made golf course for him. The only thing is, is his head going to be in it after a major? Yeah, and he's kind of been a guy, right, for the past few years now who, who has, like, almost only shown up for majors or maybe elevated yep. events. So I guess that, that would be a concern. Um, I do let, you know, I, I talked heading into last week, the reason I didn't bet him is that it just hadn't really been vintage Morikawa where he'd been losing strokes on approach. He gained 3.2 strokes on approach last week, also gained 3.7 off the tee. So it was more of like a vintage Morikawa ball striking event last week. So I, I love him here. It's a great course for him. It should be a course he excels at kind of tailor made for his game. Um, yeah, he's just a, a, he was a, it's a little too short in the betting odds for me to want to pull the trigger. But I, I do think if you still have him in one and done, that um, you know, now would be a good time to use him. Okay, and uh, now uh, we, we just this uh, next group here of Homa uh, through uh, see what Kim you see there. Well, Homa is my as I mentioned is my top pick, and I like the fact that I'm getting twenty to one. Uh, he could mm -hmm. easily be, in my opinion, with, with this field, fourteen to one. Uh, it's 15 to 1. So I think now it's 18, by the way. It's just moved down to 18. So you, I'm not sure when this is going to air, but you, I, I would get the pick on, on Max Homa as quick as possible because I think it's it's still going to go down. Um, but yeah, Max, uh, it, it's really good. You know, look, it makes a lot of sense. He was ninth here last year. So that was his best appearance. He hasn't won yet. So you know he wants a win. Um, and uh, that's also maybe something that could help Morikawa if you want to pick him, even though, like you said, he hasn't been good at majors and th outside of majors and things of that nature. You want to get that winning feeling again, especially let's keep, keep in mind Morikawa just one win in three years. Yeah, I like the home of pick. I think he's trending towards a win he's been close a couple times this season i think the harder the golf course the more i like home and again not that this is a super tough course but it's also not a course where you're going to you know see the, the wing score get to 22 23 uh, 23 under so i do think uh, 20 to 1 even even 18 to 1 is, is pretty fair number for max in this field all right and then uh as far as the rest of the, again the thing with spieth is he's made 10 of 11 cuts with nine top 15s three yeah. runner-ups and a win on this golf course the problem Miscut, as we said last year, and he's not playing well. So, you know, I mean, I, I would consider him for a one and done, but I just yeah. I just can't really take him, though, the way he's playing if I've got better options. Also, Harris English, I want to talk about him here because he was 50 to one yesterday and I loved him at 50 to one. Absolutely loved him. I don't love him at 30 to one. I still I'm OK with him. I was still thinking of picking him. But I when I when you go from fifty to thirty, it's hard to pick a guy. So, but I like him, and that's the reason why he dropped. By the way, so keep so he dropped for a reason. Yep. Six top thirties out of eight, a couple top fives and a runner up. Twelfth here last year, eighteenth last week. He's playing well. It's a good golf course for him. 
Yeah, I struggle with English. I know the results have been pretty solid lately. It's a good course history here. I'm just going to tell you, though, the results lately have been all putting. He's been he's been losing strokes off the tee pretty consistently. He's been losing strokes on approach pretty consistently. It's just all been with the putter, and that, that always worries me. I mean, he's a good putter, so maybe it continues, but I, he's going to have to hit it better if he actually wants to win this thing. Uh, Tony Fina, meanwhile, seven top 30s out of eight. Two top fives and a runner-up. But just like Jordan, the only time he missed the cut was last year. So that is, and he's not again. He's not playing well. As a matter of fact, he's very inconsistent. His his results are down, then they're up. They're down, then they're up. Yeah. They're down, then they're up. <clears throat> this could be a down week. That's kind of the part of the reason I'm staying away from him. I just I can't take somebody that's that inconsistent with a low number like that. Yeah, I considered betting Finau. I'm definitely considering him for my one and done pick this week. Finau led the entire field in stroke skiing approach last week. He was the best iron player in the PGA Championship last week. Now, can he do it two times in a row? I'm even looking at his numbers now. The approach play has been awesome, not good, awesome, not good. So even the approach play has been up and down. So, you know, I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe he's due for a down week, but maybe he rolls it over and you know, actually makes a few putts and, and contends here. Okay, uh, then this next group, uh, you would think this is this would be a, a really good uh, a setup for Denny McCarthy, uh, who was runner-up, I believe, the last time they played at Texas, which was the Texas Open. It might have been Houston. But the fact is, is that McCarthy, to me, it, the, the numbers are just too low. And that's what you're also going to see with some of my picks this week, is that I'm just going more with the bargain guys. Once, it, once I get past Homa... Yeah. And the next player, I did have one player in this group. That's it. I just can't. I, I just, to, to me, I just think there are not enough bargains here, and any of these guys can win. So why just why why try to guess here? Exactly. I'll, I'll guess back there when I get double. Um, but yeah, I, McCarthy should fit well. Uh, M could play well here. But the, the the three guys let's talk about are Harmon, Minwoo Lee, and Bazudenhut. Because you have Bazudenhut on your list. Minwoo Lee is my second pick. And I was close to taking Brian Harmon, real close to taking Brian Harmon. Um, so with Harmon, he has 10 of 11 cuts made here. Nine of those are top 35s and three of those are top 10s. For Minwoo Lee, um, I, I just think he's playing well enough. He was 26th at the PGA, 22nd at the Masters, uh, another 20-something in between. So that's good. He's, you know, Now the, the field's uh, not as tough and you know he wants to win he hasn't won yet on the pga tour so maybe that works against him um and you have bazoot who has played here the last two years both uh with top 25s yeah i love the Harmon pick he was probably the last guy off my betting card and i'm i'm pr probably leaning towards him even for one and done um minwu i don't like as much just at this course i'd rather have him in a you know longer wide open course where he can use that driver i think you know here he's going to have driver taken out of his hands a bit more um and then yeah bez is just another guy where he he should play well here right he's a shorter accuracy hitter he has the results the last two years here 15th and 21st coming off missed cut at the pga i think he missed the cut on the number last week I, I wouldn't expect him to play well anyways at Valhalla, just, you know, too long of a course for him. He still gained strokes on approach. He still gained strokes around the green. It was basically field even as a putter. Um, so I'm not worried about his form. I think he's had a good season. He's played well. He you know might have a win coming at some point here, the way he's been, been trending. And again, this is, this is a good course for him to get it. In the next group, uh, we have a couple of players that stand out. Tom Hogue, who is your top pick. I like him a lot. I've already put money on him this week. Uh, and nice. the odds are good. Again, I picked him up on my fantasy team. He only has one top t 20 out of seven here, but that that's not the, the main reason. It's like, all right, well, he has one good showing. It's that he's probably never played a Colonial coming in this good. Uh, 13 straight cuts, seven, out of, seven top 20s, two top 10s, 23rd last week. Um, the only thing, though, again, he's 18 over par combined the last five years with three missed cuts on the golf course, but he is playing well, so just keep that in mind. The other player I want to mention is Bradley because I also have, uh, I also would have liked, liked to have taken Bradley this week. I think Bradley is also a decent pickup. He's starting to play better. He's trending that way. He was 32nd the last time he played here in 2020, and you just know that Bradley wasn't going to be you know, stuck in, uh, you know, that bad rut for too long and he's starting to get out of it. So out of this group, uh, Hoagie and Bradley definitely make a lot of sense. Yeah. Hoagie's course history here is surprising because th this should be a good course for him, you know, short positional course. He, he won at Pebble beach, which is, you know, similar, shorter positional course. So 
I don't know. I'm just kind of ignoring the course history and telling myself that, you know, he's just a better golfer. He's playing better at this point. Actually, Tom Hoagie is second in this field in strokes gain approach. Scotty Scheffler is the only player that's been wow. better than him on approach this season. Um, that continued last week at the PGA. Hoagie gained uh, six shots on approach. So love, love that. Love the fit for him here. Keegan talked about him briefly last week. It's like a long shot play ended up coming in, in 18th. Uh, we talked about how his iron play had been good coming into last week. It remained good last week. He gained 2.5 strokes on approach off the tee game was awesome. Last week, he gained 6.6 strokes off the tee. Then he even gained 0.4 strokes putting, which we had talked about bent grass greens are his best putting surface. It was bent grass last week. It's bent grass again, again this week. So again, if he can keep up that uh, ball striking and just putt. Okay. I think, I think Keegan's a great bet at the number he's at. Okay, now in this next group, uh, we actually have three players uh, on our list. And they include two on your list, Ekrot and Batia. So you're looking for a second win from one of these two. And then I'm just going to kind of do the Victor Hovland thing with Justin Rose. I'm just going to go ahead and say, well, maybe something clicked. And it wasn't just because, oh, it's the PJ Championship. I got to play better. Because he didn't play well at the Masters. And he's much better at the Masters than he was ever at the PJ Championship, basically. So I'm like, all right, maybe he found something. If he was 35 to 1, I wouldn't touch him. He's 50 to 1. So I'm going to go give him a chance, especially since he's never missed a cut here. He's 10 for 10. Um, five of those top 20s, he won here uh, back in 2018, I believe it was, and he was 12th last year, 6th last week. Um, but again, as far as uh, you, your uh, picks, uh, you're going to try to roll it with these two players who I'm assuming, since you're taking them this week, and that they could win their second in, in, in the season, that you believe that these guys, uh, within maybe the next year or two, are going to be top 20, yeah. top 30 players. That's definitely. I think. I think Akshay and Ekrod are, are still just underrated right now. I think they're two really good young players that are you know going to be multi-time winners on the PGA Tour. You know, Ekro won at the Honda, which is a uh, you know similar or sorry the, the Cognizant Classic now, um, which is a you know similar short par 70 and more positional golf course on the tougher side. You know, the scores don't get out of hand there. They were better this year than they had been previously. But, you know, I think you're going to get a similar winning score this week. So I think Acro makes a lot of sense. He's coming off an 18th at the PGA Championship. PGA Championship, so he's got some momentum there. And then Akshay, the ball striking just continues to be awesome. Even last week, you know, he missed the cut at the PGA. That was all a poor putting performance. He still gained 4.7 strokes approach, which was, which was you know, one of the, the better marks through the first two rounds of the tournament. Um, he's one of the most accurate drivers on tour, which is important at this course. So I think it's another good course fit for him. Again, I, I think both of these guys are capable of winning again. All right. Next up, uh, we've got uh, the next five here. Now, Aaron Rye uh, is interesting because I was thinking about maybe picking him. But the problem is, like I was saying before, I mean, you get so many of these players that are ranging from like 35 to 55. And he's one of them. Yeah. I don't know why he's 50 to one. That's just too low of a number. Matter of fact, he was 55 a little bit, of, a little bit ago. So he's even dropping further. So I like him at 60 or 70. I just 50, 45, whatever it's going to be. It's just too low for me. Uh, he is coming off a 12th place finish here last year. And he played well in the both in two of the Texas events. Fourth at Byron Nelson, seventh at Houston. So I, I get it. Uh, McNeil is also somebody that I was thinking about because of the fact that if you look at it, uh, he has now made 10 cuts uh, this year and 10 straight cuts this year. Uh, he's trending in the right direction, but he shouldn't be 50 to 1. I mean, this guy used yeah. to be 100 to 1. Uh, I, I don't know what he's doing down at 50, but you have Lucas Glover as part of your picks. I do, and Glover is a guy that every tournament he in, he's in, he just pops up near the top of my my stats model. He's actually he's number two in my model this week, behind only Scotty Scheffler. And and you you look at his numbers, and every single week he gained strokes off the tee, he gained strokes on approach. The re, the results have been like super middling. He really hasn't competed in any of these tournaments this year. He's consistently kind of you know been. 16th 33rd 20th like in that range so i i do wonder if it's a bit of a, a trap and i'm just you know falling prey to the numbers here um but when when he's still you know 55 to 1 i actually i think i got him at like 65 to 1 he's definitely dropped a little bit i i think 
can can he have a spike week is my concern. You know, can he have one of these weeks where everything comes together and he actually competes? That that's an issue to me, but he's just been so consistent that and again, this is a course where I like him on. He's a shorter hitter, he's an accuracy player. It should be a good fit for him. I'm, I'm going to give him at least one more chance. I don't know. I'll probably see him second in my model again next week and bet him again, but um we'll we'll see how he does this week. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that he's only had one top 10 out of 16 here. It's sort of like Hoke. Yeah. You know, it's like yep. uh, you would think that they would be better at the golf course. All right. Let's now move on. Uh, we've got uh, this group here and uh, two of my picks are out of this list. And uh, we've got I've got it. I've got it. One of us has to take Mark Hubbard. Has to. After uh, yes, the, the good you. week. Thank you. Yeah. The good week he had last week. <laughs> now, 65 to one. Uh, it's definitely dropping uh, where I, 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 you know, we don't usually see him uh, because he started the week at 100 to 1. So it's been a big drop for him. But he was ninth here last year. He's never missed a cut, all five. And um, he hasn't missed a cut this year. So keep that in mind. Uh, the other player I have is Adam Shank. So I had him, um, and, and it was, to me, it was an odds play. Because to me, I could see Adam Shank with all these other players. I could see him at 50 yeah. to 1. That wouldn't have yep. surprised me the way everybody else. So that's why I'm saying I'm going to take the guys that are down here um, no better or worse than the other players that we talked about. But I like the odds. And let's keep in mind, he was second here last year. He was not Shank. Shank his recent recent form would worry me a bit he was not good at wells fargo or pga maybe that's just bad course fits you know he's not a long hitter maybe those courses were just too long for him he was really good for what the you know four or five events immediately preceding those last two so including the, including two of them here. in texas including two in texas right and again th this should be a good course fit for him and same goes for mark hubbard you know not the longest hitter but accurate off the tee good iron player good putter um, especially good on bent grass his best surface he putted well last week on bent so yeah i hubbard was definitely in consideration for me just didn't quite make it uh yeah and then um the other one oh, oh it's mitchell i uh, i was kind of thinking a little bit about mitchell uh me too <laughs> yeah he's only this will be his third uh try he's made one cut doesn't have a great history here but he's playing well enough this season that yeah uh, um, again, the odds aren't all that bad. Uh, you'd be getting 70 to one where again, I could see him at 50 to one. Oh yeah. See Mitchell's odds have drifted. A lot of these guys have gotten shorter. Mitchell last I looked was like 40 or 45, 45 so. to one. He started. Yeah. And now he's 70. Um, now I don't think it's a great course fit for Mitchell. You know, he is a bomber. You want him being able to rip his driver, which he, he's not going to do as much here. Um, uh, but still, he can definitely club down and win. I think, you know, I think 70 to one is pretty good considering how well he's played this season. Well, maybe if he has the lead on Sunday without having the driver <laughs> in his hand, it'll be a good thing. Maybe. Yeah. So uh, out of this group, the one that stands out for me is actually Cam Davis because 90 to one is a big number for Cam Davis in this field. That is really the main reason that I was thinking of taking him. He was seventh yeah. here a couple of years ago. He's been okay. He hasn't had a bad year. He's been okay. Again, 90 to one. I think that's a little bit uh, too high for him. Yeah. He's been bad lately, which would be the concern, but he kind of, he's kind of a streaky player. So I'm not sure that should deter you much. So I do think that's a good number on Cam Davis. I gave Daniel Berger a look. Um, I, I bet him a couple months ago and he was bad. And I was kind of like, I'm going to be done with Berger for a while, but just looking through his numbers, um, especially last time out at the Byron Nelson, you know, came 13th there gained across the board off the tee approach around the green putting gained in every category. Um, so, you know, maybe he's starting to get it out or you get it figured out coming off the injury. And he uh, of course is a former winner here back in 2020 and even his last two times here, he's come 20 and 23rd. So definitely has good course history. All right. Uh, this next group, you got Greer, the defending champ. Uh, the one that sticks out for me is my pick, one of my picks. And I don't know why Robert McIntyre is what he's now 110. He was 130 this morning. It, does, yeah. it doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I know it's probably not a good course fit. It's his first time. I get all that. But the guy is just trending beautifully right now. Um, and I just, I have to, I had to put a five bucks on him. Uh, I was also close to putting a little bit of money on Fowler because I, I know he's not playing great, but again, it doesn't take much for Ricky to kind of get going. And I just think his odds are pretty crazy when you compare him to other players in this field. But, you know, um, again, I, and by the way, this is a better course fit for Ricky, 
um, mm -hmm. because he was sixth year last year. That was one of his best finishes. Yeah, I'm definitely with you on McIntyre. I think he's just he's just that's just too high a number i think he's just a better player than that um even if like you said the course fit isn't ideal i definitely think you know he, he's just a better player than that um Grio, unfortunately is just in horrible form so even as defending champ it's a little surprising to see him at 110 to 1 but i'm not really interested in him just he's, he just hasn't played well in, in a couple months now uh so uh, b by the way all of our picks have already been taken but some other picks that i was thinking of uh, same again same reason just because the numbers are too high patrick rogers mm -hmm. at 110 to 1 nikolai Ho uh, hoygaard at 110 to 1 um uh and uh, let's see uh as far as i mean that, that would that would be it as far as like the long shots the only other really really yeah. big long shot that i might well maybe i put a buck on him would be zach johnson only because this has oh. just been a great, historically great golf course for him. Back in the day when he was playing well, this was just, he was automatic here. He went through a run of a couple of wins and uh, other top fives. Um, he has made 15 of 18 cuts here. And his last event was 20th at the Byron Nelson. So, um, look, fantasy-wise, if you want to take someone, maybe you get good you know maybe this is a good play for you you can sh surprise everybody maybe it gets into the top 20 maybe take a look at zach johnson yeah the, the one long shot i considered was justin lauer who i i bet a little while ago he's had a nice season he's had a couple top fives um off the tee is his weakness but i think that's going to be mitigated at this course he's been really good on approach he's been really good putting lately so i do think it's a good um course for lauer and again he's he's, he's had a surprisingly good season 250 to one right now for Justin Lauer. So yeah, there's a lot of big odds out here. And we know by the way uh, the season has been, uh, anything goes. So uh, th there's going to be, there's going to be probably a handful of these crazy long shot players that are going to be available um, once you get through the first couple of days. Who you, who you pick? Well, that's the that's the hard part. As far as the players that um, I was thinking of taking, but I didn't because their odds were a little low. But the ones that I liked the most would be Morikawa, obviously, uh, Brian Harmon. Uh, let's see, um, I would McNeely, Rye, English, uh, the, uh, the, and even Putnam. I was looking at, but I don't know what the heck he's doing down at forty five to one. Uh, that's, I don't think I've ever seen him at 45 to one in a field like this before. Um, Tom Kim is 45 to one. He played much better. Another guy that came out of nowhere to play really good last week. So keep an eye on that. Um, and Straka is 40 to one, which isn't bad in this field. So, uh, was there anybody, you mentioned some of the ones that, uh, you said that just yeah. missed the cut. Yeah. Harmon and Hubbard were the two that just missed the cut for me. And then I also looked at Doug Gim. Um, I think it's a good course for him. Just not playing great lately. Um, so I don't, I don't really you know, think it's his time. All right. One and done. So, and now based on just what we have available on a one and dones for this week, uh, mm -hmm. my four finalists are Morikawa, Spieth, English, and Hoagie. Those are my four uh, one-and-done finalists. Morikawa uh, is the one that I'm kind of leaning uh, towards at this point in time. Uh, you yeah. have just two players right now? I do, yeah. And, and if I had Morikawa, I'd be leaning towards him as well, but I've already used him. So I, I'm between Harmon and Finau at this point. I think I'm going to use Harmon. Um, partly because what we talked about with Finau, he's just been so inconsistent. He's coming off a good week, so I worry about him sort of, um, you know, Heading, heading back south after that. And I also wouldn't mind saving Fina for a, a bigger event. You know, I think you can just look historically at his career. And he, he has played well at some of the, you know, tougher, elevated golf courses, you know, major type golf courses. So I might end up saving him there. I think it's a, it's a good spot for Harmon. You like him on shorter, tougher, firmer golf courses. So I think, I think Harmon would be my lean for one and done right now. Yeah. The only thing with me deciding if I take Morikawa is the way he's starting to play I feel like I should be saving him for a much bigger event. So, because uh, yep, I could fair. see him winning this week and I could see him yep. still going on and uh, winning an even bigger event. Because let's put it this way. If he wins this week, then I'd feel even more confident that he'd win at a bigger event. 
So right. if I waste him this week, that's the only thing. And again, remember, Morikawa, a player, as you said before, typically does not win these kind of just run-of-the-mill yep. events. That's just yep. never been his thing. So far, it hasn't been. So just keep that in mind. All right. So uh, what do we got coming up again next week? Next week's Canadian Open. Okay. And then it's, Memor- then it's Memorial, then the U.S. Open. Yeah. So uh, one more after Charles Schwab, and then we get to the crazy three-week stretch in June, which should be the, the best three-week stretch of the season for golf fans, I would think, with the U.S. Open in between. So that's going to be – especially since it's June, and once July hits, we all start thinking football, even though it's only July, but we start already thinking about, well, it's uh, – it's I'm, tr- always, I'm, always, I'm always thinking football. Right? <laughs> no. But, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, so we'll see you again next week here where we talk about the Canadian Open. And then, uh, like I said, we'll be back uh, for uh, what should be a huge month of June. Uh, Let us know what your comments are, questions, anything like that. And we'll see you next time.